pretty much any sport or game worldwide revolves around some sort of point system, and in many cases, scoring these points. In soccer, you have to put the ball in the back of the net, in basketball, you have to shoot it in the basket, and in the mighty sport of AFL, you have to slot the ball between the big sticks. What I'm trying to say is that in order to win, you must be able to score, and to do it consistently and effectively. The same goes for Rocket League. One team could have twice or three times the shots of another, but lose because they were inaccurate. So, to get a better idea of how offense and shooting compares across the ranks, I got two plays from every rank to complete two fairly comprehensive training packs, ground shots and high level shots, and to tell me the results of both. Ground shots is the easier of the two, and tests shooting ability from just about everywhere, and high level shots is a lot more difficult and requires aerials, reads, and great car control. Also, just before we dive into the video, it would be amazing if you could subscribe to support the channel on its journey to hopefully 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. It's been a long-term goal of mine, so it would mean a lot. So let's dive into the first of the two training packs and look at how every rank handled it. So we're beginning with the lower rank players, and the first thing that I noticed immediately was the speed and reads that they possess. They were often waiting for the ball to roll into an easier position to score, rather than testing themselves to put it in quicker, which would probably mean a lot of their shots would be saved despite actually scoring them. They also lacked a lot of control when it came to placing the ball, as they were just so focused on actually scoring it. As we move on to the middle rank players, we see a faster speed of both the shot being taken and the shot going in. They exhibit better ball and car control to guide the ball towards the net, but like the lower rank players, there is a lot left to be desired. Some of them began to hit the ball a lot earlier, which ultimately makes it harder for the defender to beat you to the ball or to save it. So if you're one of the new or lower rank players, that is definitely something you should work on. The speed at which you attack and hit the ball. Finally, the high ranks showcase a much better exhibition of skill when putting these ground shots in, and they are a lot more consistent with them, which is reflected in the results, as they can score the shots without actually taking the time like the lower rank players do. Due to the ease of some of the shots, a lot of the players actually try to test themselves with extra spins, air dribbles or double taps, which is something that the lower rank players definitely don't do. Lastly, the speed and accuracy of some of the shots is superb, as we see a few boomers and bar downs that even the best players would struggle to save. So now for the results, as there were 50 shots, each of them told me how many of them they actually scored first or second try. The bronze players scored 10 and 16 out of 50, then the silvers were quite a bit higher at 31 and 28, and then came the golds at 32 and 34. As we move into the middle ranks, the platinum scored 36 and 30 respectively, and then the diamonds bumped this figure up with scores of 42 and 32. Finally, the champs were more consistent with 40 and 34, and finally, the grand champions scored 40 and 38. I also did the packs, and I got a score of 42 on ground shots. A key thing to think about is that despite the scores being similar in different ranks, the power and accuracy of the shots differed greatly. So just because you can score more shots in a training pack, it does not make you better than someone else, as they could simply be aiming for speed and accuracy. I'll start by saying that this pack is a lot harder than ground shots, and I intentionally chose this because of the short timer and speedy nature of the shots, meaning that the lower rank players cannot take their time and must hit the ball straight away. The difficulty is reflected in their clips and results as a lot of them struggle to make contact with the ball, and when they do, it just looks kind of clunky and can likely be saved. However, these shots are way above their level, so I didn't expect any of them to be able to do it. The middle ranks are where I was most interested to see the results, and this is because it is the level where scoring these types of shots can actually become important and beneficial in game. While some of them did struggle, they actually scored a few of them, which just goes to show that it is something you're going to need to begin to drill if you're trying to break into or out of those middle ranks. The speed and control compared to the high ranks was much lower, but the fact that they were scoring them is an achievement in itself. 
Finally, the high ranks is where the true showing of control and skill is displayed, as despite the difficulty of the shots, they were still able to challenge themselves with extra mechanical plays and shots. They know where the ball is going to be and are able to execute the correct manoeuvres to score it. Controlled aerials and air dribbles, flip resets and musties are just a few of the mechanics they use to show off their skill while still scoring. So if you think you deserve to be in these ranks, this is the level you must be able to complete these packs at. So this is the area where we see a huge difference in results. There were only 13 shots, but that was enough to show the difference between ranks. Both bronzes only managed to score one of the shots each, and the silvers were similar with 0 and 1 out of 13. The golds were slightly higher, with both of them scoring 2 of the shots, and the platinums doubled this figure with 4 apiece. There wasn't too much of a difference in diamond, with them scoring 4 and 3 respectively, but champ is where we see a bit of an increase, with 6 and 4 of the shots being scored, and in grand champing there were scores of 6 and 8, and I scored 6 as well. The larger difference in results of this pack is definitely caused by the higher speed and lower timer of the shots. In the previous pack, the low ranked players had around 10 or so seconds to put the shot in, whereas in this one it was only 1 or 2, meaning if you missed the first touch or dropped the ball, you didn't score it. This just goes to show how you need to work on these tougher shots if you want to rank up, as everyone can score the balls from right in front of net. So to finish the video, here is a little montage of me attempting both training packs. Enjoy. Alright, so let's see what I can get here. First few shots are, are pretty easy, shouldn't have too many struggles with them. Oh, jeez, I just had a speed flip there. 13 from 13 so far. Really good start. That was shit, oh my god, how did I miss that? And again, oh my god. Now you got a bit more horizontal towards goals here. No. I'm not leaving this shot till I get a double reset. There's one. What? As if I didn't have a reset there. It's like here's soft hit, you hit the brakes. Get up nice and high. Ooh. Little, little, little musty. I actually just. Nah, nah, nah. I'm just gonna like go for a musty. There we go. That's what we like to see. There we go, this is a good setup. Whoa! Where's my reset? That was alright. That was, that was some good control, but I'm, I'm not selling for anything less than a flip reset or a flip reset musty. So that was that was actually a, a pretty boomer reset, but the problem was I was already in the goals. I'll take that one, just because I want to move on. Oh, oh, I actually scored that. I thought I'd completely been that. Uh, yes, I scored it at seven. Seven or six, oh, I'll say it's...